Hi folks, it's 12 o'clock in Middle Tennessee and that means it's time for Dental Profits where today we're going to talk to you about eliminating cancels and no-shows. It's Valentine's! Hi folks, I'm Sean Crabtree. We're Welcome to Dental Profits, the weekly webinar series coming to you right outside of Nashville, Tennessee, where we come to you live every Wednesday at high noon central time talking about having you be able to have happier patients, better results, making more money, and enjoying the ride. I'm so happy to be with you today. The subject matter is one that plagues everybody in dentistry, and I want to show you how to eliminate that. Cancels and no-shows, and we're going to talk about that today. I want to give you some steps to take away that can absolutely change your life. When it comes to eliminating cancels and no-shows, listen, that makes for happier patients. It makes for better results. It makes for you making more money and you can enjoy the ride. My name is Sean Crabtree and for the last 20 years I've worked closely with dentists and dental teams from um, Vancouver, British Columbia to Barbados and from Nassau to the Great Lakes and what I've learned is what I want to share with you in this podcast every week. So let's talk about it. Eliminating cancels and no-shows. Can you really 100% eliminate cancels and no-shows? You know what, you're always going to have emergencies, there's no doubt about that. You're always going to have somebody who has some situation pop up. We're not talking about that. We're talking about the serious amount of broken cancellation and no-shows that you can eliminate outside of emergencies. And that's what I want to talk to you about. The, before we get into it, let me tell you a couple of challenges that we see on a regular basis. And I realize, I just cut a, a small video on this the other day, I realize that I'm not making any friends. You guys who are listening or watching this and you're working in the dental office, I know one of your favorite things is the automated patient contact system that you have. And I love it too. There are many of them out there, solution reach, demand force, et cetera, et cetera. Listen, I love those guys too. And I often find that most of those things are underutilized. If you want to learn more about how we might have you fully utilize those things, please give us a call. Now, we're talking about, though, automated patient contact when it comes to things like cancellation and no-shows. Specifically, if we're talking about cancellations and no-shows, we're talking about confirmations. Those automated systems are great as a part of your strategy when it comes to confirmations and specifically eliminating cancels and no-shows. One of the biggest challenges that we see on a regular basis, and I know I'm not going to make any friends when I say this, but just as I said a moment ago, just because it's not popular doesn't mean it doesn't make it any less true. Those systems are not meant to be your entire strategy. And so I was just on a social media today where somebody had a question about cancels and no-shows and should they or should they not implement a cancellation policy. And there was all sorts of talk from both sides of the coin. It's great. It doesn't work. Um, you know, and everybody was giving their two cents. My experience is the challenge with cancellation policies is they're not implemented correctly on the confirmation process. Therefore, they become punitive. In other words, you're using your automated systems and you're using a cancellation policy and that's all you have. That's not a good strategy, okay? You should write this down. If you're listening or if you're watching this, you should write this down. There's no digital system out there that can ever replace human to human contact. With human to human contact, you have the ability to ask questions, you have the ability to create value. In a digital scenario, you can't do that, so you've got to not simply only rely on these digital systems as a total strategy for your confirmation process. Instead, mix it up, and that would be the first thing I would tell you um, as a takeaway from today, okay? If you're having a high amount of cancels and no-shows, and I want to actually I want to talk about what a high amount 
um, looks like. And I want to challenge maybe a little bit sort of your thinking on what a high amount of uh, cancels and no-shows. Give you some food for thought there. Um, but the first big takeaway is this. Nothing digitally is ever going to be able to replace human-to-human -human contact. So, I know I'm not going to be popular when I say that because you guys love the, the automation because you're looking at it as a way to not have to do work. And you know what? I agree with that. It can cut down on the work. However, it's not a total strategy. Your total strategy needs to include the automation. It also needs to include human-to-human -human contact. Takeaway number one, your strategy has to include human-to-human -human contact. Now, before I get to number two and number three, let's talk about this just a second. What is a high amount of cancels and no-shows? What does that really look like? You know, and I think the answer is, I've learned over the years that, that it really depends on what role you play in the office, right? If you're the person up front, then a high amount of cancels and no-shows could be defined a little bit differently. Because if you don't have, you know, six cancellations a day, um, but if you have a couple, that creates a, a real pressure cooker environment. Because if you're up front and you have some holes to fill, and you have those holes to fill like by tomorrow morning, all of a sudden, that's a high amount of cancels, right? So depending on where you are, you might want to look at how that situation plays out differently. Now my assumption is already, and perhaps this is a bad assumption, that everybody who's listening to this and watching this is actually tracking cancels and no-shows. If you're not, you got to start tracking it. You got to know what you're up against. And think about the person who's at the front desk. If you have one or two or three holes that pop up today for tomorrow morning, all of a sudden you've got to put everything aside and you've got to focus on filling those holes or not. You just do your thing and you know everything else that you're doing at the front desk and you, you know, have that constant feeling in the back, you know, in the pit of your stomach that in the back of your mind you've got to get to filling those holes. Um, so be aware of that, okay? It's all relative. Um, back to what I was saying a moment ago. There's three things that I really want to give you when it comes to cancels and no-shows. You've got to be tracking this stuff, so you have to know what's working. You have to know what's not. The number one most important thing is this. You have to have human interaction in your confirmation process. You can't depend wholly on the automation. Number two thing I would tell you to take away is this. If you understand that you have to have human contact as part of your strategy, the second thing is you need to put those calls in. The second takeaway is this. Put in the amount of calls that are necessary for you to get the achieved result. I've been doing this for 20 years. I've learned that there's no cookie cutter approach to anything, right? It's what works and what works is what you want to continue doing. We've had offices in the Bahamas where you know they have a different cultural challenge. Well, I don't know. It's a little bit like Tennessee. Um, you guys that are listening to this, if you're if you're in the mid south or perhaps you're not in Tennessee, let me educate you on this. This is February, and so we have very little snow in Tennessee. But when it snows, there's this unwritten rule that everything shuts down. As a matter of fact, not only does everything shut down. But all the Publix and all the Kroger's immediately run out of, Casey's laughing because he knows it's true, they immediately run out of milk, they run out of eggs, they run out of bread, and of course all the liquor stores run out of uh, wine. Because everybody is, you know, has a mad dash to get these things because they're going to hunker down for this, uh, you know, one quarter of an inch of snow that brings the entire state to an utter halt. Well, in the Bahamas they have a different challenge. They don't get a whole lot of rain in the Bahamas. And so when it rains, there's this unspoken rule that nobody leaves the house. And literally, that's the case. Nobody goes to work, nobody goes to school, nobody leaves the house. It's just like this understood cultural thing that when it rains, nobody's going to go to the dentist. So we had some unique challenges there um, when, you know, when working with dentists right there in Nassau. We implemented as many as four calls, and yes, we actually implemented a cancellation policy. We found some interesting things. Um, you know, number one, nobody wanted to be the first office to come out of the chute and do a cancellation policy. When I say cancellation policy, what are we talking about? Here's what we're talking about. 
we're talking about a cancellation policy. We're talking about, you know, some sort of a preventative measure like the threat of charging a $50 fee or a $100 fee or whatever that fee is um, if you miss the appointment. And so if you've scheduled this appointment or what I like to say reserve this time, if you've reserved this time and you miss the appointment, then there is a cancellation policy that has a charge attached to it. Um, I've learned in implementing those calls over the years, whether it's the Bahamas or Florida, whatever, uh, anywhere in the U.S., the trick to that is a cancellation policy will work. It can benefit you, but it can't be a punitive measure. In other words, if you don't balance the proper amount of calls and type of calls and human-to-human -human contact with a cancellation policy, then the cancellation policy becomes a punitive measure. If it's just a slap the patient after the fact, then the patient is just going to run them off, right? You have to implement human-to-human -human contact, and you have to do that with a certain number of calls, and you have to do it with a certain, or certain orchestration of that. If you want to use cancellation policy, make that part of your confirmation process, but make it part of the process, not in the digital, digital part, but in the human-to-human -human contact part, so you can orchestrate that communication in a way that you can engage the patient and they're coming along with you rather than something digital. If something is thrown out digitally, and you guys have all run into this, right? If you get a, if you read a tweet or if you get a, even a post on, you know, Facebook or whatever, or if you get a, a text message or an email, then the, the, the meaning of that email that you get is based on how you interpret where the tone is, what's the tenor, the speed, the pitch, and all of that based on how you read it. You don't want to leave any of that to chance. You want to be able to engage the patient in a conversation. And you can't do that unless you have the ability to have one-on-one -on -one contact through these calls. So, number one, you got to have human contact. Number two, you have to put in the necessary amount of calls and you have to put the proper orchestration of those calls in place. One of the biggest challenges we hear with putting in human human calls is this. My patients say that I'm calling too much. Okay. Here's what I tell you about that. If your patient says you're calling too much, and you need to be cognizant on this when you're laying out what the strategy looks like. If your patients say you're calling too much, then here's what you're doing. Every call you make is a reminder, or every call you make is the same subject matter. If the patient thinks that the reason you're calling now is the same reason you called last week, then they don't see any benefit in the call. So you have to make sure that the orchestration is laid out how you need it to be. So we're on number two. We've already committed to number one. You have to have human, human contact involved in your strategy. Number two is you have to put in the necessary amount of calls. How does that look? Let me give you a typical scenario that we see. Typically what we find when we walk into an office that we're just beginning to work with for the first time, they have a scenario laid out where they have maybe solution reach and maybe they have a, uh, or maybe they, oh, I tell you what, what we run into a lot of times is the first touch is a postcard. So they're sending out a reminder postcard and that usually goes out two to three weeks you know, in advance. And then there's usually a two-week or a one-week follow-up with a text reminder. And then there's usually a day before text reminder. <clears throat> so remember, if that's what's going on, all of that is digital, number one. If you're not getting the best results you're after, you know that you need to implement what we said a moment ago. You've got to have human 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 contact. We've got lots of offices who have different success rates doing different ways. You've got to track it, and you've got to be able to know where you are so you can change it up. If what I just described is a little bit like where you are, you got a postcard going out, you got a two week or a one week text, and then you got a day before text, let's say, 24 hours out or whatever, and you're not getting the results we're after that you're after, then we're on number two, put in the necessary amount of calls. If it were me, I would implement an in the middle human to human contact call. So you've got postcards going out, you've got, let's say, a two week text going out, I'd do a one-week call. And I would make that a hard confirmation, but I would also reference, you know, what's happened on the text. If the patient has responded to the text, you've got that information, reference that. If the patient hasn't responded to the text, you've got that information, reference that. Remember, 
The trick is to engage the patient because that's how you create the value. If it's a simple digital reminder, okay, it's being scrolled past just like everything else, and you lose the ability to create value. In human contact calling, you can actually create value. So how that might look in that one week call, if that were going to be the one you'd implement, it might go something like this. Hey Casey, I'll use Casey back here because he's looking at me. Um, Casey, this is Sean. I'm calling from Dr. Feelgood's office. Um, I noticed that I know you got our text last week about your upcoming periodic exam and oral cancer screening or cleaning or however you want to say that. And I'm calling right now to make sure that nothing in the world is going to prevent you from making that call. And if I can insert something personal there because I've looked at the account, I would do that and I'm going to engage the patient, right? And I'm listening for the patient to be engaged and give me not only a verbal yes or no, there's nothing that's going to prevent me from making that call. I want to know in my gut, do I feel it? Like, do I feel, or, or am I kind of getting the sense that the patient is like looking at the newspaper while they're talking to me? or they're on Facebook or whatever. If that's the case, I need to ask some more questions. Do you have your calendar with you? Do you have your schedule with you? Now, they, to answer that question, they have to engage with me, right? Now I know I've got their attention. So again, I could refer to that text. I know you received that text. We didn't get a reply, so I'm calling now. Do you have your, cal do you have your schedule with you, right? I can engage them like that. I'm calling now to make sure that nothing in the world is going to prevent you from making that call. And then I'm, I'm, I'm not just listening for it and moving to the next thing, right? I'm, I'm feeling it. In my gut, do I feel like that this is a real, the, the, the patient is actually confirmed, yes, it's wholehearted, they're going to be there, right? And that feeling is probably more important than what you're hearing. Or it could be the reverse. Maybe you sent the text and they responded to it. Okay, then you need to have a, a little different reason, right? Maybe you could play with the patient a little bit. Um, Mr. Jones, this is Sean. I'm calling from Dr. Feelgood's office. I know that we sent out a text last week and you responded that you are in fact going to be at your upcoming periodic exam or cancer screening. And you're waiting for them to say, yes, I will be there. A lot of times they'll say, now when was that again? Because they may not have paid attention to the text. They may have just responded, right? All of these things are things that you need to be able to play on with the dynamics. So that's kind of a question, and you're looking to engage the patient. And depending on how that response is, you may ask another question. So, you know, I, I mean, I know how you like to play golf, Mr. Jones. Even if it's pretty you're going to be here? Whatever, right? Insert some personal stuff. Engage the patient. This is human-to-human -human contact. That's the whole purpose of the call, right? So that would be probably what I would do in that scenario. If you've got postcards, you've got two-week texts, let's do a one-week call, and then you've got a reminder 24 hours. But track it. Track it so that you know what's working. Track it so that you know what's not. Um, the other thing I would say just real quick on that is while you're tracking this stuff, you guys know if you can if you boil down your tracking at the deepest level, you know whether or not or or what percentage of your patients that are not showing have actually responded to the text, right? That can play into how you might lay out these calls as well, depending on what that looks like. All of this is information that you have the ability to utilize to be able to come up with a strategy that's going to get you the best results. The other thing I might do, let's say you put that one week call in there, you're getting a little bit better results, but you're not, it's not maximized. Then put in a day before call, okay? So in my, in my hypothetical here, let's say we've got postcards going out, we've got a two week reminder, we've got a one week call that's orchestrated like we talked about. Now we're gonna implement a one week call. And again, I'm only gonna do this if I'm not getting the results that I know I could maximize. So the, the, the day before call, you don't, if, I, if I'm sending a postcard, I'm doing a reminder text, and I've done a hard confirmation at the one week out, I don't want to make it a, a day before call and do another confirmation. That's not going to work, right? Change it up and don't use the tired old verbiage that you hear most people saying. Most people, unfortunately, nobody listening to this I'm sure does this, but what we hear a lot of times is there's no engagement with the patient whatsoever. And so it kind of sounds something like this. 
Um, hey Casey, this is Sean. I'm calling from Dr. Feelgood's office and I'm just calling to remind you of your appointment or I'm just calling to confirm your appointment um, next week at 10 a.m. Bye. Right? You never engage the patient. You could picture the patient on Facebook scrolling, right? They answer the phone. Hello? Scrolling. Scrolling. You do your spiel. They're scrolling. You go, uh-huh. Hang up the phone. They never even remember talking to you. You never even interrupt their, interrupted their pattern, right? So think about that with all these calls, but specifically on that day before call, if you've done those reminders, you're not going to do another reminder, right? This is a value call. This is an opportunity for you to create value. So what could that call be? It could be, are you on any new medication? since the last time we spoke. I mean, it's been six months, or it's been three months, or it's been four months, or whatever it is, and that's valuable for, the, valuable for the hygienist to know. So how I phrase that and how I orchestrate that is very important, though. It could go something like, um, now remember, I've already done the one-week call, too. Hey, Casey, this is Sean. I'm calling from Dr. Feelgood's office. I know we spoke last week, and you said nothing in the world is going to prevent you from making your upcoming visit with us, and that's tomorrow at 9 a.m. I'm calling now to make sure that you're not on any new medication that I need to let Sandra know about, right? Now I can begin to create value. Now, when I ask that question, if I'm going to listen for not only the answer, but is the patient engaged? If I've not engaged the patient, then that question didn't land where it needed to land. I need to ask another question. Perhaps even if, even if it did land, I can now go further and ask a, question, a different question to further engage the patient. Um, so you're not on any new medication? Okay, let me ask you, do you have any sensitivity that you've noticed since you were last here that I need to let the doctor or Sandra know about? Is there any cracks or sharp edges when you run your tongue along your teeth? Okay, great, I'm gonna make a note of that. A lot of times you'll be surprised if you ask that sensitivity question, you'll be surprised how many times you get, yeah, when I'm chewing ice or whatever on the lower right side, make a note of that. Make a note of that and pass that information along in your morning meeting. So your hygienist, when she comes to get the patient, can reference that, which communicates to the patient that the person who called me yesterday and my hygienist are on the same page. They remember me, right? So now the hygienist can say, hey, Sean, <clears throat> so Sandra was telling me, you're, or, or uh, whoever, I lost my, my names there. Sandra was telling me that, that you're having a little sensitivity on the lower right side. Okay, let's take a look at that, right? That communicates value. Now, you guys have heard me talk a lot about value in this webinar series, and, and there's a reason for that because it all relates to value. Back to this conversation. Think about it in these terms. If you have a patient who's fallen out of hygiene, okay, it is because they don't see value. That's it, period. Now, you can, you can, you know, there, you could wrap that lack of value in a whole bunch of different things, but the point is they're not seeing value. They're not seeing value in coming to the hygienist every however months or they're not seeing value in dentistry, or they're not seeing value in your time, they're not seeing value in preventative things, right? They're not seeing value. So ask yourself, if the patient is not seeing value, am I further helping to create value by sending out a reminder call with no human-to-human -human contact? No. If I just place a call, I've got human-to-human -human contact, but if I'm simply doing a confirmation, and that's the way I orchestrate it, I've still not created any value, right? So the ability to do that is in the orchestration, it's in the, it's in the human to human contact. Okay, so number one, I gotta realize that my strategy has to include human to human contact or I'm not gonna be able to engage the patient, I'm not gonna be able to ask questions and create value. Number two, I wanna put in the necessary amount of calls that's gonna get me where I wanna go which means I gotta be tracking, I gotta know what's working so I can celebrate and keep it up. I've also gotta know what's not working so I can change it up. We've talked about so far putting in perhaps a one week call and then a day before call. In my analogy, it was postcard, two week text, one week call, and then 24 hour call, which is what we adjusted it to. If you're not doing that postcard, I can tell you, that can add benefit as well. There was a study recently done in the Wall Street Journal that said basically, I think I'm, I think I'm uh, quoting this stat correctly, um, there were four companies that began doing snail mail as reach outs 
to their clientele. And over the course of the study, what they found, this is in 2017, what they found is they had a 30% higher response versus just simply relying on digital um, social media kinds of things and text and email and all of that. Now, the, the, the takeaway from this article was basically that, you know, times have changed. In the old days, you used to go to the mailbox and then you stand at the garbage can and you go trash, 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 bill, right? You keep that one. Well, nowadays that's kind of happening with email. It's certainly happening with text because we're all inundated with all of this stuff. So it might be that a snail mail postcard will really get you some attention that you've not gotten in the past, right? So put that in your, in your mix as well if you're not currently doing that. If you are currently doing that, then add the other stuff as well. You could always do another call. I know nobody wants to do another call, but you got to make sure that you're tracking this. You got to make sure that the orchestration of how the calls are going is really on target with your strategy. And you got to also make sure that you're, you, you know which part of it is working and which, and which part of it is not. The big three or the big third takeaway that I would have for you is this, and this is something that I see that is not paid attention to very much at all, and that is how you actually handle a cancellation. Um, unfortunately, I think the majority of what we find is if, if somebody's not focused on it, is there's a ringing phone, somebody grabs the phone on the way to the op or whatever, or somebody at the front desk grabs the phone. The patient says, yeah, I'm supposed to come see you guys tomorrow at 9. I just need to cancel that. And you automatically go into tactical do mode, and you just, okay, well, let's find a time that works. Or the patient says, I'll have to call you back um, to reschedule it. And okay, right? Interrupt that pattern. Make sure that you're focused. And this is the third takeaway. How you handle that cancellation in the moment will determine what kind of results that you're getting on a regular basis. You've got the opportunity, if you see it in that moment, to create some value. Well, how do you create value? Well, just like you create value everywhere else, right? You ask a question. That can look as simple as, ring, ring. Um, thank you for calling uh, Dr. Feelgood's office. This is Sean. Um, yes, this is Casey Davis. Um, I'm calling just to cancel my appointment tomorrow at 10 a.m. Oh my gosh, Casey, what's wrong? Now, a lot of times, there's nothing you can do for this, right? My husband had a heart attack. I'm on the interstate. I'm two hours away from you, and I gotta, uh, you know, I'm going to have to spend the night because my car is total. Or, you know, stuff like that you're not going to be able to deal with. But you'd be surprised. A lot of times, if you're focused on it, these are things that you can deal with. And with the senior level offices that we've coached over the years, they're getting really good at this. And you're, you'd be surprised at the percentage of calls that you can actually overcome it. It might be when you say, oh my goodness, Sean, what's happening? Well, you know, the, there's snow on the ground today, school's canceled, and I got my kids with me. Well, don't worry about it. Bring them with you. Problem solved, right? It could be as simple as that, but you won't know unless you ask the question. Those of you who are listening to this or watching this who have done that before, you're going, yep, you know, you'd be surprised because I've done that a whole bunch. So here's what we talked about so far. For me to be great at maximizing, eliminating the non-emergency cancels and no-shows, I got to have human-to-human -human contact as part of my strategy. Number two, I've got to put in the necessary calls, and those calls have to be orchestrated properly to be able to get me the results that I'm after. I got to be tracking it. I got to know what's working. I got to know what's not. I got to measure my automated results with my call results, and I got to know where I need to tweak it. Number three. I need to put a focus on handling cancellation calls rather than rescheduling or rather than allowing the patient to hang up. If you implement those three things, you're going to be amazed at what your cancellations and no-shows can look like. We talked a little bit about the cancellation policy again. Uh, some people have a big belief that cancellation policies don't work. Some people b believe that they will. My belief is it can absolutely help you if it doesn't become a punitive measure like we talked about a moment ago. So reference the cancellation policy um, on the front end. Reference it in the confirmation calls. You could even reference it in the text calls if you're mixing it up with the human-to-human -human contact and you can reference that 
um, in the calls as well. If you'll do that, I promise you, you will see a drastic, drastic reduction in your cancellations and no-shows. And that will help you have happier patients, better results, make more money, and enjoy the ride. And that's what I want for you. This has been Dental Profits Weekly Webinar Series where we come to you live every week just outside Nashville, Tennessee at high noon talking about those things that are going to help you have exactly what I want, which is success for you. If you like what you hear, please share this information. Go to our YouTube channel. Go to, I tell you what, go to our webpage, thecrabtreegroup.com. Click on the YouTube. When you get there, hit subscribe. Every single video we do, whether it's webinars or anything else, will go directly to your inbox. If you have a question or concern or a challenge, reach out to us. Our information will be linked below this. We're happy to help. I'm Sean Crabtree. I'll see you next week.